Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I haven't filmed a wrap-up video in a really, really long time, so I thought it would be time to let you guys know what I've been reading since the beginning of 2018. The last thing that I read in 2017 slash finished in early 2018 was Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Finally read this book that I've been looking forward to so much and that I put in my five-star TBR list just because of how everybody else has reacted to it. And I did really enjoy my time reading it and I loved following the characters that I knew so well from watching the TV show twice over, but I still think that I consumed it incorrectly, like I should have read the book before I watched the show and not the other way around, just because there are a lot of revelations in the TV show that are probably best served reading first before you watch. Like, nothing was really a surprise. The only thing that was interesting was kind of the differences of what Leanne Moriarty saw in the setting because it's set in Australia instead of in California like the TV show is. What some characters do and say in the book that are a little bit different than the TV show. There's definitely a lot more stuff in the book than there is in the TV show, I think. I still really enjoyed seeing how these women view themselves, how they view femininity, how they view motherhood, how they view their friendship with each other slash kind of frenemy relationships that they have. I think that was one of my favorite things about the show, kind of like how it all seems one way but really they viewed things differently and they viewed being women differently in their heads. For me, it was lovely to just get more of that. Forever, I will love hearing about Madeline and Celeste. They are my two favorite characters. I don't really care that much about Jane, either in the book or in the show. I just love Celeste so much. She's my favorite out of all of them. And Madeline, with her snark and her humor, is probably a close second. I also really think that the show does a way better job at being subtle about the intricacies of their lives, motherhood, and how they view each other. Because I felt like the book, not that it had an agenda, but I thought that the book had like talking points. And I just like that experience, that subtlety and that nuance a little bit more in the TV show. I would still definitely highly recommend. And if you are planning on watching the show, just read the book first. The next book that I read after that was a memoir. It's The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. I finally got to another really anticipated book that I've been thinking about reading for a really long time. I got this one on audiobook just because it was available at my library. I really enjoyed the audiobook experience because the author is the narrator as well and I feel like she has this twang to her voice and she has kind of like the tone correct and what's playful and what's serious and what's ridiculous. She really plays that up and gets you to understand more of her thoughts and her moods. It really follows her growing up in this neglectful family and not just nuclear family but like her extended family as well. Her childhood thoughts about all of that and her trying to balance this idea of her family as loving and caring and looking out for her and also the fact that they put her in situations that were at times even abusive and her trying to see like the complexity of all of that that she could really enjoy her family's company and see how they stood up for her and provided for her at times but also see how they really let her down. So many of these stories are really shocking and at times I was like are you serious? But seeing her relationship and even to this day how she views her parents was very interesting to me. The storytelling here is really really engaging and that was one of my favorite parts. There were so many entertaining aspects to her, her stories. The pranks and the things that her and her siblings would get into were sometimes really silly and that's probably my favorite thing about this book is just how pulled in you are by her narration because they're just so different from what you're expecting or what you've ever heard from childhood stories. The next book that I read in an effort to be more financially sound in the new year was The Financial Diet. Let's talk about the positives first. I thought that this book was really beautifully designed. It has great charts, great illustrations, great pictures, great inserts, and I just really like the look of it. That's really cute. So I enjoyed it for that. And I also really liked the way that it was organized because they tackled a lot of different financial subjects. So chapter one is budget, chapter two is investing, chapter three is career, then it's food, home, love, and action. They divided it in a way that I thought was approachable and easy to understand. But I will say that I thought that 
some of the chapters were a lot more necessary than others and I kind of wish they would have cut some of them and just added more things for the ones that I thought were more important. So for example, I don't really need a book to tell me what kitchen supplies I should have and that's part of their food chapter and like they have recipes in here that you could kind of whip up. I feel like those are things that I can just look up on Pinterest or Yumly and not things that I really need a book to tell me how to do. There's also a lot in here about like what your wardrobe should look like and what are like some staples you should have in your wardrobe that will last you a really long time. Again, I don't need somebody to tell me that. That's something that I can look up on Pinterest and I don't really think that a lot of other millennial women are looking for that kind of advice. What I really wanted and what I think most women probably want is more of an idea of how to budget, how to finance, how to start investing, how to start saving and I really like those chapters the best. So like the first half of the book was a lot more interesting in the subject matter because I was learning new things than the back end of the book. I also thought that the humor in this at first was really funny. Chelsea Fagan takes his whole like outlook of oh, we're millennial women, we don't know what we're doing. We don't have our shit together. We need some help. I thought that that was really funny and relatable, but after a while, even though this book is really short, that got a little bit gimmicky and slightly repetitive to the point where I was like, okay, I don't really care about hearing you try to make the same joke again, even though you just did it like a page ago. There's a lot of quotes in here that they make into really huge graphics, and they are so similar to each other. This one says, feed yourself like you were a welcome guest in your own home, not an ex you were trying to get rid of. And now let's compare it to other ones. Waiting until you're rich to start caring about your money is like waiting until you're married to start dating. This one. Money without a budget is like champagne without a glass. And those got kind of like gimmicky to me. But what I will take from this book is it gave me kind of like a call to action and it kind of made me start thinking about automating my payments for my credit card. It's making me start thinking about how I want to start my budget and what I want to put in there it has made me start paying off my loans for my masters. I thought that maybe I would wait until I graduate to start doing that, but I can I think I can set aside fifty to hundred dollars a month to start paying that off and then there'll be interest that I don't have to pay later on. So for all of those reasons, I think this book kind of gave me like a get started kind of punch. I will value it for that. So if you want to learn more about some of these subjects, I think that there's probably something better out there. And I'll keep searching because this is something that I'm trying to do in the new year is to look at my finances and start thinking better about my money. And I do know that they have a really great Tumblr slash YouTube as well. So I'll link some of those below because I think those are, at least from the Goodreads reviews that I read, those are better received than this book. And last but not least, the last thing that I've just finished recently was Another Day in the Death of America by Gary Young. And this is a chronicle of 10 short lives. And this follows the lives of 10 children and teenagers that were shot and died because of gun violence, either be accidental or on purpose and it all happened in a time span of 24 hours so Gary Young just picked a random date in the year and decided to look into those 10 lives. The first chapter really punched me in the gut. It is a really heart wrenching story about a really young child and just learning about how he died and the senselessness of it and how selfish the other person was that committed this crime. It just really broke my heart because he was so young. That story was really provocative and really insightful because it had access to the family. So his mom was being interviewed by Gary Young and we got to hear more about her son from her. And so I thought that all of the stories would be like that. But sometimes Gary Young did not get access to families and that's totally understandable if you are going through this grieving process and some random journalist comes up and is like, I want to interview about it for my book. You might say no and you probably would say no. In the chapters that he couldn't get access to families, I would say maybe half of them he couldn't get access to families. In those chapters he would kind of diverge into talking about semi-related things. Like there's a lot of in here about teen psychology and what their brain development is like and and why they might do the things that they do, how they use social media, and how that can be perceived by us versus what it might actually be. Just what kids and children do for fun. Not that it felt like filler, but parts of it felt like because he didn't have access, he kind of just started pondering things in here. Some of those things to me were interesting and engaging, but other times they were not as engaging. They all came back to the same idea and the same core argument that didn't really elevate or change my way of thinking. Other than the fact that I 
didn't really foresee how many accidental deaths happen in America because of guns. And that's something that was revelatory and different. However, I do think that he used a lot of other influential work, sort of like a crutch sometimes. He mentions Ghetto Side by Joe Levy in here probably more than five or six times and he puts an extensive quote in here as well which is like her main thesis in her book. I just felt like that was not adding as much just because I have already read that book. He also mentions Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow in here often and I just felt like maybe he needed to do more of his own research and come up with his own arguments than just use the structure of following 10 lives and having that fit into the ideas that he already had by other influential work on these subjects about gun violence and race in America. This book was a lot more successful when we got those family narratives than when we didn't. So I would recommend you checking this out, but definitely if you haven't read Ghetto Side, I think that's a way better book than this, it's just because from how many times Ghetto Side is mentioned in here. I read this as a buddy read and it was really interesting to hear Bibliotech, who comments on my videos often, have her tell her idea of guns in her country. So it was also very interesting to just hear it from another perspective and have that kind of comparison going on while I was reading this book. And I quickly wanted to mention what I'm reading. I'm currently reading Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a book of stories. Remember I said that I don't really read short stories. I'm trying guys. I also downloaded it off of Hoopla because it's on there so maybe I can listen and read at the same time. I'm still on the first story so I haven't really made a dent at all. For an audiobook, I'm currently listening actually to Fire and Fury by Michael Wolf, the much talked about book all over news media and Twitter, etc. For my library hold, like for a physical copy, I'm still like number 80 or something, but I randomly was browsing my other library apps and one of the libraries that I'm subscribed to just had a bunch of available audiobook and ebook copies, which was kind of shocking. So whatever, I downloaded it. I've started listening to it. I'm probably a fourth of the way through and so far all I will say is that it is very condescending. <laughs> Definitely as I'm reading it I'm like wow you really have a preconceived notion about all of these people. So we'll see what I end up thinking as I finish it and that's it for me in this video. These are the things that I've read and the things that I'm currently reading and hopefully I'll come back with a video soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.